electric cars. They're the sleek, speedy, and supercharged machines ready to take on the automobile market by force. These vehicles have been known to be a hot topic of debate lately, with tons of people arguing whether their use of an alternative source of energy other than fossil fuels really is good for the environment or just an excuse for companies to bandwagon on the huge buzzwords of green energy and carbon neutrality. Your EV damages the environment by mining rare metals for batteries or tons of emissions go into making them are just a few of the ways people have criticized the existence of electric cars. However, one of the most pressing questions regarding the popularity of these vehicles is whether the aging grid of the United States is able to manage it. Will America be able to handle the widespread usage of electric cars with its existing electrical framework? Or it will be doomed to cut down even further on costs, leaving the country in a complete state of darkness? It probably won't be that bad. But it does go to show that the rise of EVs is something that must be taken into consideration by American power plants to ensure that the demand for electricity won't exceed the supply it can provide. Hi, my name is Fred, and if you're interested to find out how America can solve its problem of growing electric consumption while still allowing developments in the electric vehicle industries to flourish, make sure to watch until the end of this video. Remember to hit the like and subscribe, and turn on our notification bell so you won't miss out on any new releases from our channel. Let's get started! The premise of electric vehicles is simple. Unlike a typical automobile that runs on gasoline or diesel, an electric car has batteries that need to be resupplied with power at specific charging stations. For example, according to their official website, Teslas generally range from using 14 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers traveled up to around 23 to 24 kilowatt hour for the same distance. With an increased demand for electric cars logically comes an equally increased demand for charging stations around localities and in turn, a higher need for electricity. Working on an electric grid can be a rather difficult job, especially considering that electricity isn't like other basic human utilities like water or gas. These resources are kept in extremely pressurized containers that allow their movement through your house's plumbing to stop when you don't really need them. However, electricity unfortunately acts in a different way. One cannot easily store electricity and only let it flow through wires when needed. Pretty much when you create electricity, you also have to immediately expand it. This basically means having to keep tabs on all the electricity that's been produced so far on the grid. A balance must be achieved. Too much electricity and a surplus of power would only put the generated watts to waste, while having too little may lead to harmful occurrences like voltage sags or citywide outages. This is a major concern considering that electricity consumption in the United States is only continuing to climb up. In the 1950s, the demand for electricity peaked at nearly 0.3 trillion kilowatt hours, but in 2020, that number rose to about 4 trillion kilowatt hours. However, transportation only occupies a small percentage of electricity consumption, meaning that if electric vehicles continue to proliferate, it's possible that America's grid won't be able to cope with this disruption to the equilibrium. America drives approximately 3.2 trillion miles a year, meaning 1 trillion kilowatt hours would be needed if all of this distance were to be driven using electric vehicles, assuming an average efficiency of 3 miles per kilowatt hour. This ups the number of the country's current electricity consumption to 5 kilowatt hours. So if we want to convert America's transportation system to using electricity, we'd have to find out how to achieve that 25% increase in electricity retail sales. Before we jump into the solutions, 
how do you think America should invest in this new technology and prepare for the rise of electric cars? Leave a comment below. And again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, back to the video. The first step that can be taken to ensure that the demand for electric cars doesn't overpower the electrical supply America's grid has on hand is by promoting efficient electric cars. One of the new technologies currently being developed in the industry is a more energy-efficient vehicle called the Aptera. While a typical Tesla Model X can travel an average of 3 miles per kilowatt hour, the Aptera can reach a distance of 10 miles, giving more bang for your buck. This company integrates solar panels onto the car, meaning that this battery-powered vehicle may not even need charging at all. Hypothetically, if everyone began using Apteras, the additional demand placed on the electric grid would be cut by a whopping two-thirds. Another solution for the added stress on America's grid infrastructure would be to decrease the number of oil refineries across the country. Oil refineries are industrial plants which transform crude oil into various products like gasoline and diesel fuel and the amount of electricity they used in 2021 alone reached a staggering 43 billion kilowatt hours of electricity. Oil refineries have been known to have negative impacts on the environment and on public health, considering the amount of toxic fumes released to the atmosphere as well as the chemicals that seep into the soil. Perhaps if we can find a safer source of renewable energy, America's electric grid can continue to make way for electric vehicles and at the same time become more environmentally friendly. Speaking of being friendly, why not give us a super thanks or join our awesome membership program to have your comments highlighted on this video. You'll also get access to other amazing perks if you decide to become a member right now. And let's go back to how America's grid can prepare for the future of electric cars. What if we also consider spreading out demand on America's electric grid in a strategic way? With solar power now becoming more and more prevalent as a modern source of energy, there is a noticeable trend in the demand for electricity throughout the duration of one day. Energy demand drastically drops during the day when the sun is out and shining, and suddenly rises at night. This can pose a major problem for American grid operators. During the daytime, when demand for energy is relatively low, baseline power plants are normally utilized that can provide the amount corresponding to average electricity usage. However, at night, peaker plants are switched on which use energy sources prone to producing pollutants and are more expensive to operate. To mitigate this issue, some regions of the country have adopted policies such as charging people depending on which time of the day they consume power. For example, if you consume a lot of electricity during the night where demand is usually high, you'll be billed more. This is where electric cars come in. These vehicles can be charged overnight, where demand for electricity drops, making them relatively cost-efficient. If the majority of cars were set to recharge during the late hours of night, this would initially cause a flat rise in the baseline for average electricity consumption. However, this wouldn't necessarily be an issue. In fact, this would open windows of opportunities, such as putting up new power plants. This leads us to another way to accommodate electric vehicles. If we speed up the development of sources of renewable energy, we can make these cars' batteries store the generated electricity. This solution would help in balancing out the demand on America's grid. It's important to know that utility companies don't produce electricity. They simply purchase electricity from power plants or other sources not caring as to where this electricity really comes from. With new platforms like AutoBeater by Tesla that allow customers to buy and sell electricity on a virtual market, one can make money by simply parking their car and allowing it to generate and store electricity by solar panels. 
These mobile power plants may be the future for decentralizing America's grid, becoming more efficient and financially beneficial than the typical car running on gas. More technology pops up each day that's leading to this change in electricity production and consumption, such as Ford's F-150 Lightning. Using innovative vehicle-to-grid technology, individuals can treat electricity like a commodity on the stock market, investing when demand is low and selling when the need for power peaks. Even without a driveway or a home charging system, public charging stations can still be beneficial as this would use power coming from EV and solar panel users. With 100 million electric cars, trading 10 kilowatt hours for each vehicle can already store 1 billion kilowatt hour for storage and consumption each day. This is massive and still leaves EV drivers with enough power to carry out the tasks they need to do. Lastly, electric school buses can also be an important future asset, considering that these vehicles are only driven for 2 to 3 hours daily taking kids to and back from school, and are left out in the open for the remaining time of the day. It's no surprise that these buses can act as massive charging stations, storing electricity for future usage. In short, America's electric grid is still determining the best ways on how to handle the rising demand of electric vehicles. The future is electric, as they say, and it's important to know how electric power plants can meet this surge of vehicles running on electricity, developing more energy-efficient vehicles, lessening the number of oil refineries, spreading out demand on America's electric grid, and making EV batteries multi-purpose can all go a long way in accommodating the people's need for electric cars. Change is inevitable, and as we're seeing the switch from gas and coal to electricity, it's exciting to think about how America will adapt to the new era of all things electric. Did you like this video? Hopefully, you learned about the proposed solutions to making sure that America's grid will adjust to electric vehicles and stay with the times. What do you think about the future of electric vehicles? Give us your thoughts in the comment section down below. And that's it for the video. Thanks so much for watching. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Check out our latest videos by turning on our notification bell and stay updated on new trends in technology. Did you know that electric cars run on all sorts of batteries? Namely lithium, hydrogen, and solid state. To check out the differences between these battery types, click and watch this video and learn more about how battery technology in EVs is currently evolving. This is Fred and I'll see you on the flip side.